Bible study and prayer time right here at West End Baptist Church. Thank you for being out there. Sorry you couldn't be in here, but this is part of what it's all about, the sickness that's going on. And we're glad that we can reach out to all of you. Wherever you happen to be tonight, in whatever location you are, we're coming to you. My name is Tom Moody. Brother Jordan Williams is here to do our prayer list and our prayer time for tonight. And we'll be doing our Bible study, lesson number six of spiritual gifts. All of that is happening right here. Now on the side of the screen there, you'll notice our prayer list is scrolling. Those are all the names. I don't know how many there are, probably two or 300 of them. And we just decided to put them all up there. And they are alphabetized by first name in the active prayer list. And then later on in the military and later on in the bereaved families. So you'll see your name or the names of people that you put up there. And if you want to add a prayer list name, you can do that right now. We won't be able to get it on this particular list, but we will have it and have it for Sunday. The phone numbers are 623-423 here in Newport, 623-9056. That's our church number, and Charlene will be there to answer your phone calls there. 423-623-9056. My cell number is 865-617-8387, and Jordan is here to answer that request, okay? You can text my, my cell phone. You can email my cell phone. You can even make a phone call to my cell phone if you want to and give your request for prayer. Notice the prayer list is right there, and there's the phone number on the bottom of your screen. All of these are here so you can know that we take this very seriously. We are praying for you. We're in the M's now of the current list. Some of these have been called in. There's a couple right there from the prayer line. My husband, my son in jail, and my wife. I do not know who these people are, but we know that God knows who they are, and that's all that really matters. Uh, if you have sent in a prayer request and don't see it, let us know, because to be honest with you, we're not infallible. <laughs> I, I know that you're probably not going to believe that, but we're just not infallible, and we can make mistakes. The slash indicates husband and wife. If it's the ampersand in between, that's a husband and a son or a daughter, something along that line. But we have your name, and we're praying for you, and we take this very, very seriously. We give this out every Sunday morning uh, in our bulletin, and people take it home. I put mine in my pocket and carry it with me everywhere I go. When I'm there at the house, I put it up on the refrigerator, which is the most honored place in any home behind the magnet on the refrigerator. And I'm reminded every time I go by and not open it because I can't open the refrigerator anymore. But every time I go by it, I see your prayer request. Here are the bereaved families that are scrolling up there now. Remember those the names that you see right there. Again, they are alphabetized by first names so you can find them. The number to call, 623-9056, and just call us and tell us you're watching. Just put a little smiley face or a thumbs up or uh, tell us what you think about the telecast and the broadcast for tonight. My phone number, 865-617-8387. Sunday morning, I'm bringing the message entitled, I Thirst in a Different Way. And the reason I've called it that is because on the radio broadcast on WNPC at 9 o'clock, I am preaching on the fifth saying of Jesus from the cross, which is, I thirst. Now, there's the book to cover right there, I Thirst in a Different Way. And that is available for you if you'd like to have it. I've already mailed them out this week. But if you'd like to have one sent to you, if you'll call in your name, call in your address, we'll be glad to send it out to you. Uh, go out in the mail tomorrow. I'll take care of that tonight. If you'd like to have it, and you can follow along with us. Also, the lesson for tonight is on the website as well. You can put that up there and go along with it as well. Well, let's see what's coming up here. This coming Sunday, I bring the message on I Thirst in a Different Way. The Sunday radio broadcast, WNPC at 9 o'clock, is I Thirst, the fifth saying of Jesus Christ. Next Sunday, 9-11, uh, Michael Withrow comes back to bring the message to us on Sunday morning. Brother Jordan preaches on Sunday night. He's always preaching on Sunday night. We had him in here last Sunday morning, got a good treat from him, listening to him bring the message on Sunday morning. On 9-18, September the 18th, the Gideons will be with us to give us their report. I've asked for Billy Shelton. I don't know if we're going to get Billy or not, whatever. They just send us a good guy, and whoever it is, you'll enjoy the Gideon Report. We are a supporter of Gideon Ministry. What better gift could you give than the Word of God? What better gift could you give than God's Holy Word? 
Uh, just recently, we had a funeral service here from uh, Mary Ann uh, um, Moyers, and we decided to send 50 New Testaments out in her memory there to do that. So that's the, what better gift could you do that? We do that through the Gideons. 925, Mike Hensley, our director of missions, will be coming to be with us to preach for us. Brother Mike is the only man I ever ordained twice. I ordained him as a deacon in this church, and then later on when Swansylvania came calling, he said, do you have any preachers? I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. So uh, we ordained Mike Hensley and sent him down there. He stayed as pastor down there for 30-some-odd years. On October the 2nd, R.V. Maynard will be coming to bring the message to us. R.V. is an evangelist, and he was, he was ordained right here in this church as well. R.V. Maynard. Uh, I'll be back on the night. I'm not going anywhere, but I'll be back in this pulpit on 10-9, October the 9th, bringing the message on, I've uh, forgotten now what it is, but I've got it ready to go. And then on the 16th, Brother Dwayne Husky will be coming back to bring the message for us. And so all of this is going on here right at West End Baptist Church. Again, names. Now, these are the permanent names that are on the list right there. These are people that are on there, and they stay on there until somebody tells us to take them off. The others rotate across there every week. They rotate on every four weeks, they rotate off. Every three weeks, they rotate off as they come across. When they're in the fourth week, we rotate them off unless you tell me. When you tell me to leave them on there, you make a phone call, you call it, you text a message to myself or Jordan or Charlene, whatever, we'll do that. Notice some of these names that you don't know. I don't know Tanisha. I don't know who that is. But she, she sent in a prayer request or somebody did for her in her name and we are praying for her. Again, the bereaved families are right there. Brother Jordan will be coming in just a few moments to uh, take care of the prayer time. Uh, one more thing while we're talking here. Uh, Jesus spoke seven times. And if you have not been watching or listening to the broadcast, he spoke seven times from the cross I'm preaching on this. This is the booklet, that, and we send out a booklet as well on this. This is the message that I preached a couple of weeks ago called Behold Your Son, Behold Your Mother. This is Christ's comments from Calvary on the radio station WNPC. Here's the message for this, uh, for this coming Sunday called I Thirst. You saw that just a moment ago. And then last week, when I'm not preaching, we still have a booklet called The Message of the Week, abbreviated MO, M-O-W. We'll have The Message of the Week, and it's called Where Men Are Too Busy. Brother Jordan will be coming in just a few moments to take care of some prayer requests and also to lead us in prayer. And uh, so let us talk about just for a moment while he's coming, the seven times that Jesus spoke on the cross. He said, first of all, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. That's continuous action, folks. He was praying that all along. He prayed that all along from the very first of it in the Garden of the Gethsemane, even in the arrest and the betrayal. The second thing he said, he spoke to the thief. He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. The third thing, as far as we can tell, and I don't know the exact order that this goes in, but as best we can tell, this is about the way it was. The third thing he said was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he died, Christ, Jesus Christ had my sin and your sin on his precious back. And he, God could not fellowship with him. God could not look at him. Some have said he turned his back on him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the fourth saying, he spoke to his mother. He took care of his mother. He took care of his friends. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. He's talking to the apostle John there. The fifth saying is, I thirst, which just gives us that he was human. Human. There are those that believe that Jesus couldn't feel pain because he's a spirit being and he's God and he couldn't feel pain. But he had a real body in the likeness of sinful flesh and it was thirsty, almost ready to die. The, the sayings number six and seven were said in total darkness. They were, it is finished, tetelestai. That's a shout of, of victory. And then father... Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and quit breathing. Now you can't do that. I can't do that. I, I'm in the early stages of emphysema and, and a COPD. And when I get to where I can't breathe, I start struggling. I start fighting for it. Jesus just quit breathing and gave his life for you and for me. And that's what we're doing here tonight to have prayer time, to have Bible study centered on the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Brother Jordan is coming now to share with us any new requests that he might have and to lead us in prayer. Brother Jordan. Well, tonight I actually did have some new requests come through, text messages and actually added from Charlene. So we are going to add right now Michael and Beth Harbs. I believe that's Harbs, New Jersey. Michael and Beth Harbs and family. And this would be one of the main causes is we have the bereaved, we have the family of Hunter Harbs, 21 years old. Uh, so be remembering the family of Hunter Harbs as well. One just came through all my text messages, the family of Ruby Faye Wheeler. Yes. Ruby Faye Wheeler just came through on my text messages. So again, uh, lots, lots of opportunity with this, type of, uh, with this type of ministry. We've got the, pr the prayer requests that come through throughout the entire service. They're added. Even if they don't get to me before I end this part of the message, uh, we will get them on there for you. Remember, also you can like or share these. Like, share them, get them out there, and, and, and you know, that, that even gives it another opportunity. Maybe, maybe we miss it, but someone else sees it before we do when you share the, the broadcast and the message. So there's all kinds of ways to get the word out and to get these prayer requests out to those that will pray. So I don't have any more to add right now, so I guess we will have our prayer time, and we will get started. Good report from Ronnie Forrester today. Okay. Ronnie Forrester is on the prayer list. He's been having some tests run, and um, he, he, got a, he got a pretty good report. He's going to have to have surgery, uh, but uh, not what we thought it was. Good. Okay. Not what we thought it was. And that one just came to mind. Debbie. We're going to add Debbie Renner to the prayer list. So be remembering Debbie Renner. Today had had a, a medical accident today, an accident requiring some surgery. So be remembering Debbie Renner. And I, I don't see any more coming through on, uh, on, on the broadcast online, so we will go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day you've given us. Lord, we, we lift up all these names to you right now. We lift them up now. And Lord, we ask that you move in the hearts of people to lift these up. Lift these names up individually throughout the week in their, in their own prayer lives, in their prayer closet, wherever that is, Lord. We just ask that you burden our hearts, that we may bear each other's burdens and pray for those that need prayed for. And Lord, we just ask that you be with these people. Show up, show them your comfort, show them your power and your hand. Whatever your will may be in their situation, Lord, I pray that you show up and give them that spirit of peace, that spirit of calmness. Whatever it may be, whether it be marital problems, whether it be money problems, whether it be health problems, Lord, show up and show them that dependence on you is the only way, is the only way to get through it, Lord. Lord, and I pray that you use us in any way that you would see fit to carry out your will in the prayer requests of these individuals as well. We ask that you be with us in all things, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you help me with this now, Jordan. I'm not sure I can do all this, but... The people that are working out here, this doesn't just happen automatically, folks. There's a lot of people that are working behind the scenes and in front of the scenes as well. Up in the roost, we've got Caden and Logan Ford. They're doing the PowerPoints and some things, that, whatever they do up there, working their magic there. I'm looking at Bobby Burgess. He's sitting right there operating the media center, the, the, the sound. Shelly's sitting right back here correcting you and getting you straightened out. And you're here during the prayer list over in the office. Charlene is taking prayer requests. And in the video room, we have uh, Dave Landreth and Shirley Fodness. They're working to do the video. So this thing doesn't just happen overnight. This is something that takes place here. And we praise the Lord for these people who come out. They're using their spiritual gifts. They're using their gifts. And that's what we're talking about. Do a little bit of review. We're talking about lesson number six. It's essential that both the well-balanced church and the well-balanced individual Christian know and understand what their spiritual gifts are or is, if however many you might have, in order that you can function at primary maximum level. It's important to know how to use them, the where's, the why's, the when's, and to know when they have been effective because of the results. The results. Every believer has at least one spiritual gift. Now, I'm looking at you, and if you are a child of God, you have at least one spiritual gift. Most people have more than one, but the primary one will kind of rise to the top. 
So many people, most people have more than one. That's the reason why people sometimes can't really determine what they're supposed to be doing because both of them are functioning there in the church. But every believer, every believer, every child of God has at least one spiritual gift. There are three main scriptural passages that we've been using. We're using Romans chapter 12. We're using 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter number 4. It's very important that we follow along because there are varieties, there are differences of spiritual gifts, and all of them are for one purpose, and that is to bless other people. Okay? Now, look at the passage of Scripture on your screen there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 4. There are varieties, differences, of gifts. But it's the same Spirit who gives that to us. There are varieties or differences of ministries, administrations, the way that they're used. But the very same Lord takes care of that. In 1 Corinthians 12, 6, there are varieties of effects or operations. But it's the same God who works in all things, that's neuter, and in all persons, that's masculine. He works in every situation, all things, every situation, that's a neuter gender, and then in all persons as well, talking about children of God. They are given, spiritual gifts are given for one purpose, that is to perfect the saints in our work for the common good of the church. Now here's the outline that we've been using. Number one, what the Bible teaches. That's where we have been now for some time. We have the teachings of the Bible concerning spiritual gifts. First of all, there are seven spiritual gifts. Seven basic spiritual gifts. And the definition is a capacity for service given by the Lord for every Christian to build up in the body of Jesus Christ. They are listed in several passages in your scriptures. Prophecy, which means forth telling of the Word of God. That can be anything. You say, can a woman be? Yes, of course. Women preach the gospel all the time. They may not be serving as a pastor in the pulpit area, but they're teaching, they're doing the work. The things that they do are presenting the Word of God. Everything we do presents the Word of God or it's not worth doing. It would be, we should close up the doors if we can't just preach the Word of God in everything that we do. You say, well, what about the Harvest Festival? That's, that's based on Halloween. No, no, it's based on the goodness of God. The, the har ours is. Yours might be based on Halloween, but no, ours is based on the goodness of God. And we have wonderful blessings that we come out. And we have children that come in here, and they they sometimes have been scared by some of the stuff that's going on out there on Halloween night, but they can come in here and be safe. They can have a hot dog or drink some Coke or Kool-Aid or whatever we've got for them and, and pick up some things. We do that for the glory of God. Let me give you the list of things. They are prophecy or providing, preach, uh, presenting the word of God, ministering, which is the word dekanos for the word deacon, serving, teaching, exhorting. Those are the people that just you want to be around. You just want to be around those people. Giving, there are people who honestly have a spiritual gift of giving. I've met some people in my life that have that spiritual gift of giving, and when they do it, it's because it's a special blessing that they look forward to. Then there is the spiritual gift of leading or ruling, what the King James says. Leading. There are people who do have that gift to lead, to administer things, to tie up loose ends and get things moving. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then the last one is showing mercy. Showing mercy. Mercy. All of these things are spiritual gifts, and there are seven of them. Now, hang in there. I'm holding up five fingers. Two more is seven, seven spiritual gifts. Now, you say, well, now, wait a minute. My church has more than seven people. So does that mean, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked me that. I'm, I'm sure somebody's thinking that right now. I'm sure you, I have been since I've been doing this subject, and I've been teaching on this for some time now. Yes, there are seven spiritual gifts. But let's, look, we're going to get that. Just hang in there. Just hold that question for just a moment, okay? There are ten spiritual ministries into which these spiritual gifts can be used. These are opportunities that are open to exercise our spiritual gifts. They are listed in various passages, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, Romans chapter 12, as an apostle, 
That means one sent out from. That's probably a missionary today, apostle. Prophet is one who forth, forth tells, not foretells, but forth tells, speaks out the word of God. Evangelist, the one who primarily reaches out to lost people. A pastor who's a shepherd, tends the flocks as such. The teacher, you know what teachers are. God has blessed our church with lots of teachers here in this church and lots of medical personnel, each of which are using their gifts and their talents and their natural talents as well. Then we come into a list of others. Number six is a worker of power. A worker of power. We have to explain that. And we've, we've spent quite a bit of time on that one. And we'll continue to talk about that one because that one is greatly abused. Then there are gifts, plural, of healings. We'll talk about that. Helps. Somebody who just says, I just want to help you. What can I do? What can I do around the church? I'm, I don't have a specific gift. I don't know anything about Photoshop. I don't know anything about sound equipment. I, I can't play the piano. Uh, I can't sing. I just want to help. What can I do? Helps. Then administration. These are people who, again, we have to have. These are leaders in the ministries, the ministry of leading. And then the last one, different kinds of tongues or languages. That is a ministry. That is a ministry in the Bible. Don't shy away from it because it's right there. Ten spiritual ministries. Again, we will talk about each of these. Now, the three main passages of Scripture that we've been using are 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians chapter 4, and Romans chapter 12. And the key to understanding them is to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, you say, that means the second coming. Oh, yes, we use that scripture all the time to understand about the second coming of Christ, rightly dividing the word of truth. But every scripture should be rightly divided. Put it where it belongs. Noah went out and built a great old big black box. To be honest with you, Jordan may have, but I have never been called to go out and build a big old black box. Not one as big as he did. That was his call. That's what God called him to do, and that's what he did. Uh, for 120 years, he nailed, hammered on that big old back black box, not knowing about rain. He said it was going to rain, but it had never rained before. He didn't know, but he did what God led him to do. He's never called me to do that. Jordan, has he called you to build a big old black box? Well, okay, so, so now then we've got two votes against one. <laughs> but we rightly divide it. We categorize each where they should be placed. Now that is a legitimate means of Bible study, especially where the second coming truths are concerned, rightly divide, and the same thing happens when we work it in this particular study. Here we're going back to the outline now. We have seven spiritual gifts. We have ten ministries in which those seven gifts are used, and then there are nine results of these spiritual gifts in these ministries. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12, verse number, uh, uh, verse number 7, to each one, to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For the common good. That's very, very important. Now let's do some mathematics. Let's practice our math here. Uh, I'm going to use this church right here and myself because I know I won't get mad at myself for using myself as an illustration. Sometimes people, when you use them as an illustration, they get kind of peeved at you. But let's look at the mathematics of this scenario. 7 times 9, 63, times 10, 630. Seven gifts, nine manifestations, or nine ministries, and 10 manifestations. That's 630 possibilities using a, spe a special gift in a certain way for a certain result. There's 630 possibilities. And that is with just one gift using in one ministry with one result. Each of these things. That can be 630. But consider a church service. Now we've got about 300, 400 members, but let's talk about people that come. <laughs> okay, The ones that attend. Any one given Sunday, we may have 120, 130 people here, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. One minister, let's say Jordan, preaches one message. He preaches, he proclaim, proclaims, forth tells the Word of God, tells it forth, proclaims the Word of God in one service, one message by one preacher in one service. Then one person gets saved. 
Two people rededicate their lives. Three people volunteer to serve in the Easter drama. And four people commit to care for the church mailing list. I'll take care of the mailing list for you. All from hearing the same sermon in the same one service. Now, do you see how this thing can multiply itself out? It's not just one person doing one thing. It happens all the time. A person preaches on uh, uh, Noah's Ark. And somebody sitting back there says, God spoke to me that I need to be more involved in a, a building ministry. Okay, God was using that message to talk to that one person about building. But over here is a person who says, God has spoken to me about keeping the nursery because they must have had things going on in the, in the, the nursery, the, the little animals and things like that. They must have had little ones to care for. So God has spoken to me about keeping that. From a message about Noah's Ark, one person is volunteering to do building, and another person wants to keep the nursery. God uses this in every way possible. As one spiritual gift is used in one ministry, and yet all these different results and all these different manifestations God said it this way in Isaiah 55. Now watch this real closely. God says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and they water the earth so that it might, number one, give seed to the sower. Now that's for next year's crop. You get the seed for next year's crop from what you grow this year. And bread to the eater. That's this year's crop. So we have two results of sowing one seed. You get seed for tomorrow, and you get bread from this year's crop. Then he goes on to say, that's the way my word shall be. It shall not return to me void. The word void means empty or worthless. But it shall prosper in the things which I have sent it. It shall accomplish that which I please. I have that assurance. Jordan has that assurance. RV has that assurance. Mike has that assurance. Dwayne has that assurance. The Gideons have that assurance. People who come and teach in our Sunday school have that assurance that you take the Word of God, you open the Word of God, you explain the Word of God, you preach the Word of God, you proclaim God's Word, it will not, not return void or worthless. Uh, again, it, it just, it's not something that just doesn't happen. It happens every time you open the Bible and proclaim it. Now, it'd make a pretty good book stop, I guess, or a door stop. It's just a big old Bible here. It'd make a pretty good door stop if you wanted to use it, maybe to wait down a coffee table or something like that. But you open it and you begin to read from it and proclaim it. It will not come back void. It will do the job that God has sent for it to do. That's what he says in the Word of God, Isaiah chapter number 55. Now let's look at these, these nine manifestations here and these results. First of all, you have a word of wisdom, a word of wisdom, the definition to see God's Word more clearly from God's point of view. Now, if I convince somebody to see something from my point of view, then I have not, I'm not preaching the Word my job, Jordan's job, our job here, our teachers here, our deacons here, our people, our sound people, our video people, our people that are all over this building right now doing the work, even answering the phone for the glory of God. The purpose is to let people see things from God's point of view, a word of wisdom. This is one of the first results of using properly the spiritual gift, the ability to see a situation from God's point of view. Secondly, the word of knowledge, the ability to understand what he has shown you, the ability to see that. I understand that clearly now. I've used this illustration many, many times before. I was a young man in the seventh grade. I was 13. I believe I reached 13 in the seventh grade. And so 12 or 13, whatever. And I did not understand what a direct object is. Nobody had ever tried to explain it to me before. They tried they said it receives the action of the verb. Okay, I got that. What does that mean? It receives the action of the verb. Okay, that's what a direct object does. It receives the action. Ask me what a direct object is. What is a direct? It receives the action of the verb. Okay, I understand that. Do you understand that? I didn't understand that. 
I knew the definition. I could quote it, chapter and verse. But I didn't know what it meant. Receives the action of the verb. What in the world does that mean? And my teacher, Mrs. Wade Butcher, said it this way. If I hit you, you receive that action. And bingo, Tommy got it. Light bulbs went off over my head. She told my mother later on, she said, I could see when he got it. I could tell, I could see when he, when he got that. I understand it. It came clear to me now. She was teaching and imparting knowledge. It receives the action of the verb. But when she demonstrated it, I got it. I know now what a direct object is. Man, I can go to town. I can write my newspaper column, use all kinds of verbs and nouns and direct objects, and also spiritual truth as well. A word of knowledge. Number three, faithfulness. Faithfulness is increased when the spiritual gifts are used in the right way in the right ministry. The Bible says that they are the ability to visualize what God is doing, even though it might look impossible. You may think, oh, that's something I, I, I can never do that. To be honest with you, I didn't think I could ever do what I'm doing either. And I've enjoyed 57 years of it. And if I got five more, I'll do it for five more, whatever. I didn't know that. I'd, you just have to understand you just don't know what God can do until you take that step of faith out there. And the little boy, I never was a little boy, but a boy from Frog Pond, Tennessee, and how the message is going out now from wherever it happens to be. Faithfulness is increased in the Word of God. Now these are good ones here. Healings, the bestowal of health on every level, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Most of the time, we major on the physical. Most of the time when this sort of thing is said, this is happening, we're talking about physical healing. But it's more used in emotional and spiritual things. Specifically, spiritual things. God can heal an emotional soul. God can heal a discrepancy in the spiritual thing through the proclaiming, the proclamation of the Word of God. Healings. You can be healed physically. You can be healed emotionally. You can be healed spiritually as the ministry goes forth. To make whole is the Greek word, what it means. And it, that has to do with, with all sorts of different ways, sp spiritual as well as physical. The one who is ministering seeks to know God's will. And on that basis, if somebody says, pray for so-and-so that's sick, we've had the, these prayer lists that go here, about 300 names scrolled across the screen there. I don't know them all. I, I, I don't know these, some of these names that were given tonight. But I'm going to pray for them. But they, they see that. And without knowing it, I don't know the situation. But if I know your situation, I will certainly pray for you. And God will sometimes answer the prayer. Sometimes he says no. God answers yes, no, and then wait a while to a prayer. But somebody ministering God's will, and if it's in God's will, if it is his will then God can answer that prayer of wholeness to a sick person's body or soul or his spirit. Then the fifth one is miracles. Sometimes God does a miracle. Now I'm talking to everybody outside. There have been things that have happened in your life that you can't explain it any other way but what it was God performing a miracle. You know it. You know it. Sometimes you don't want to say it because it's one of those holy moments. Can I, can I be this way? One of these holy moments that you just really don't want to talk about. But God has performed miracles in your life. Anytime a child is born, that's a miracle. Anytime somebody is able, a doctor is able to use his skills and maybe his gifts to work on the human body. God has created the human body as such that doctors can do wonderful things. God has made us in that simply, in that way. Now, Satan, let's give the devil his due. Satan can manipulate this one. He can confuse you on this one. Somebody who's superficial can see something happening and they say, that's God doing that. It might See, if the devil made me sick, let's just say the devil made me sick. And then some preacher came along or somebody came along and prayed for me and all of a sudden the devil who made me sick, all of a sudden he takes that away and I'm healed. 
Then here's a guy that's got a reputation of being a healer. <laughs> the, the devil can use this now, folks. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm proclaiming the truth here. The devil can use this. He can counterfeit this to confuse and confound superficial people. Because part of this is having a word of knowledge. Can I back up on that? Word of knowledge. You can see that's part of the spiritual gifts. The sixth one here is again our old friend proclaiming the Word of God. Prophetai, speaking forth the Word of God. It means to forth tell the mind of God. And that will happen every time the Bible is open, the heart is right, the motives are clean, and the person is presenting the Word of God in any kind of way. Phone call, cards, letters, anything. TV, radio, audio, uh, anything. A newspaper column, anything. Any kind of way you're, you're doing it. And that's presenting the Word of God. An example of this would be to have some area of your life, Noah's Ark preaching, keeping the nursery some area of your life that God says, I want you to do this. He speaks to you as the Word of God is proclaimed. This is a result of the use of the spiritual gifts. The seventh one is called discerning of spirits, something every Christian needs to have because there are people out there that are con artists. There are people in the Bible days that were con artists. They tried to deceive the apostles. They tried to even deceive Jesus Christ. To, to, the devil came to him deceiving him, trying to, trying to deceive him. And discerning spirits, the idea of supernaturally distinguishing between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error before it may be seen by somebody else. Be very, very careful about this one because it is something that God can give you the ability to do, and the devil might also jump in on this one as well. Be very, very careful. Number eight, kinds of tongues, speakers of various languages from the word gene glosson, the, the, national, the national language. It denotes a family, a country, or a nation, indicating that this is a, this is a language. To be sure, there may have been some times when when words were used that were known only to God. For instance, the Apostle Paul said, I have spoken in tongues more than any of you. And I bet you there's nobody out there or here that can say, I remember when Paul spoke in tongues. We don't know when he ever spoke in tongues. The reason why we don't know it is because he never did it publicly. It is between a person and God. I have told you this before. We're right here on the Knoxville Highway and the county fire department comes through here three or four times every day. And every time I see or hear that siren coming, I simply pray, God help them to know what to do when they get to where they're going. Let everybody get out of their way. Let them get to where they're going to be on time, to know what to do and have the equipment to do whatever it is. But I don't say that out loud. I say it in my heart. I say it in my mind. I'm, I'm breathing that prayer. I'm speaking to God. I'm not talking to anybody else. I'm just talking to God. That, in, in my case, is a use of tongues. I'm using that to talk to God. He clearly understands it. He clearly knows what I'm talking about. But I don't make it a big issue. When I'm at the restaurant up here, I'm, I'm eating, and I hear that siren going out the, the, the Cosby Highway. I bow right there and pray. But I don't say, everybody stop, I'm going to lead a prayer here now. No, no, I just do that privately. That's a private thing. That's a private thing. It's a spiritual thing. It really is. This refers to a, an ability to speak spiritual truth. And it's between you and the Lord. The last one is interpretation. The ability to understand. The ability to understand what's going on. That goes along with distinguishing of spirits. The word Armenia means to explain, to interpret, and it's used to explain the words given in a language. Interpretation. We will pick these up again. We'll do this. We'll, we'll pick this up one more time. Now tonight, quickly, I have about uh, 15 minutes or so for tonight. I want to, you to deal with the subject of how can we discover what your spiritual gift is. Everybody wants to know. People come to me every time I do this series, what, what's my gift, what's my gift? Not my job to tell you what your gift is. It's God's job to tell you, and it's your job to listen. So how do you discover your spiritual gift? There are some general rules here. Number one, 
Read the characteristics. Read what the Bible says these ministries do. Read them honestly. Read them objectively. Through the characteristics of all of them, read them. Don't try to make your life fit one gift that you want. Don't try to say, well, I want to be this, so I'm going to gear my... No, you let the gifts describe you. What is God doing with you right now? Read the characteristics of what these gifts and these ministries and these results do. Is he working in your heart now? If you've been saved a couple of years or you've been saved uh, 20 years, you've got a spiritual gift and God hopefully is using your spiritual gift in a manifestation in a ministry. Uh, he wants to. He certainly wants to. And you want to find out what it is? Then what, what turns you on, folks? What, what, what do you enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing in the church? What do you enjoy doing outside in the spiritual ministry as such? Read the characteristics of it. Number two, realize the basic truths. You know that at least one spiritual gift is yours. And that may describe one aspect of your life. You may have several. Most people do. But one will rise to the top. You know how cream used to rise to the top of the milk? Cream would rise up. One of them will rise to the top. There'll be others there too. Yeah, sure. People can have more than one spiritual gift. Naturally. You get a carpenter to build a house. He, he does the foundation. He does this. He does the walls. He does the roof. He does the kitchen cabinets. He does all of this stuff. Uh, so we are in the spiritual building of building lives. And certainly it, we have many spiritual gifts. But at least one of them might just rise a little bit above all the rest of them. You're going to find that. Read those and realize the basic truth. Then remember what you've learned. Remember it is not necessary that everything that should happen to the 100% person with the gift of teaching, 100%, he has them all. You might have the gift of teaching with only 80%. But is that your gift? It's your job to learn how to do it better, improve yourself, be a better teacher, and build it all up from 80 to 90 to 100%. So... How, whatever you enjoy doing, as I said a while ago, what turns you on in the ministry? What do you like? What do you like in the, in the ministry? We have all kinds of things going on here. You can't see it, but behind me up on the wall here are the words of Scripture, the, the, the things that you're seeing on your screen right there. Uh, guys, can you, if you're listening over there, can you get a shot and let them see the words back there behind me? They're up there, and people are doing that. It'll take them a little while to get a shot there, but whenever they do, they, they can. Because behind me, you've got the words that the people see while I'm bringing the message or while we're singing a song or something like that. They're still working on it over there, I can tell. <laughs> but so, so these things right here, there's things that are going on, things that are happening all over in the church, different things that are happening. I can't do all that. Well, that'd be crazy. I can't, I can't, I can't keep the nursery. I can't. I'm out of place trying to teach the little junior boys or something like that. If you raise the shot up so they can see the screens behind me there, that's what I want them to see. Uh, so, any, well, okay, forget, <laughs> forget it. There's more, there's, more, there's more to this than meets the eye. I want you to understand that. More to it than that. Anyhow, remember what you've learned. Remember what you've learned, okay? Now, there's some things to understand and quickly. There they go. There they are. Okay, now you see some specific things to understand. Uh, Y'all wake up over there now. <laughs> I love our people. I love our techs. These guys up here doing the sound and doing the, the PowerPoints and all that kind of stuff. I, I love everybody in this church. It's, they're doing their thing, and they are happy in the work that they're doing it, or they're not in a spiritual ministry. Quickly, please. Let's, I don't think we'll get through with this because the clock just will not stop. I believe Bobby's got two batteries in that thing instead of just one. Some specific things to understand. A person with the gift of forth telling the Word of God. What does he act like? Well, he's a preacher. He runs around with a black suit, white shirt, red tie, shine shoes. He's always quick to... Not necessarily. He could be just a down-home type person. He could be just that way. He could do that. So a person with the gift of forth telling the Word of God is a person... Who, who, who does these things, he, he, he always speaks the Word of God. He always speaks these things. And his, he's always quick to point out the truth of all of this that's going on. 
Right now, my screen is locked up on me. The technology is wonderful. It's wonderful when it works. Okay. So let's just, we'll just go off the cuff here. The person with the gift of foretelling the Word of God will always try to be straight, be honest with you. If you are a little bit off in your theology, he knows the truth. He'll try to help you. He will try to come at you with the truth. He's, he's, he's the person that God is using to tell the Word of God forth, okay? And it could be women, it, sir, sir, it could be children. A lot of people are, can do this. They can, God uses each one of them. And they have this idea that they can present the Word of God and they can feel compelled to do it and they have a keen ability to recognize evil, to expose it, to point it out. Uh, you're, let, let, me, let me talk to you about that in just a few moments. You remember Aquila and Priscilla in the days of Paul. Uh, they, took, they took them kind of off to the side and began to help them because they had been saved longer than the other people have. And they began to try to help them to bring along in their, uh, in their Bible knowledge. That's, that's what it is. That can be misunderstood. He's very frank. I say he, she. These people are very frank. They... They have a conviction that the Word of God should be unadulterated. If I can use that word, it means not mixed up. If it's, uh, if it's the Word of God, it needs to be clean and fresh and pure. And a person who has that will sometimes, sometimes come on too strong in somebody's mind. He can be misunderstood that way. He, he marches to a different drummer because he's marching to what God is telling him to do, and sometimes it's hard for this person to turn it off. Sometimes he will be considered harsh. Maybe you could lighten up just a little bit. Somebody with this gift could be misunderstood. Uh, there, there might be a gray area. I hesitate to mention that because... I think the Word of God is just cut and dry. I just personally think it is. I've got that particular attitude. I just think it's cut and dry. But I understand that you might not see it my way. And what am I going to do? Throw you out? What am I going to do? No, no. If you don't quite see it my way, maybe you've got some good points too. So I'm, I have this idea that I'm, that I'm right. A lot of preachers are this way. Come on now, preacher. You're out there listening to me right now. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we can, we can be, buddy, I've got it right and I'm doing it right and I'm, I'm doing what God led me to do and I don't, care, I don't care to offend anybody. Now listen, come on now. That's not, the pastor, that's not the pastor ministry. That may be the evangelist or the apostle, but that's not the pastor's idea of trying to wound people further instead of helping them along. So he can be misunderstood. His interest in numbers. How many did you have in Sunday school? How many did you have? What was you offering? It may make people believe that you're not interested in them as much as you are in the growth, the spiritual things. It can be misunderstood. So I'm just telling you, sometimes these spiritual gifts can be misunderstood. Uh, maybe some of the things he does are gimmicks. We call it manipulation. He gives an invitation to love your mother-in-law more. If you want to love your mother-in-law more, come on down to the altar. And people come down to the altar because they want to love their mother-in-law more. And, and then he counts that as, <laughs> what I'm telling you is the truth here. This, this happens. But the person, this can be misunderstood. Misunderstood. Uh, I have run into people that don't quite believe the way I do. And you know what? They're friends of mine. They are. They're friends of mine. And uh, some of them don't vote like I do, but they're friends of mine. That don't mean I'm always right. So they can be misunderstood. That, that, that particular ministry can be misunderstood. Quickly, I'm going to do one more. A person with the gift of serving, serving, ministering. It has the ability to remember what you like, remember what you don't like. Uh, I get a birthday card every year from one of my classmates, Pat Shoemaker. She's listening to us right now, no doubt. She sends me an anniversary card on the anniversary of Anita and my uh, anniversary. My wife passed away six and a half years ago, and she still remembers that date 
August the 26th, she called and she said, I know that you're having a tough time. I know that you're having a difficult time today because it's your anniversary of you and Anita. She remembered that. She remembers my birthday. She takes care of all these. She sends cards. Everybody in the world has gotten cards from Pat Shoemaker. If, if you've ever done anything in your life, she has that ministry of serving. She knows what you like. She knows what you dislike. I mentioned one time, I, I know I've got to quit, but I mentioned one time in the pulpit that I liked meatloaf. And I do. But the next, <laughs> the next dinner at this church, and we do a lot of dinners, <laughs> we, we use that kitchen very well. The next dinner was crock pot after crock pot after crock pot, and places and all kinds of bowls and stuff of meatloaf. Everything was meatloaf, meatloaf. And I, I appreciate it. I tried to, I tried, I tried. Uh, <laughs> simple truth is, people remember your needs, and they want to meet those needs. And they don't seem to ever want to quit. They want to meet those needs. He's willing, or she's willing, to use her own funds, if that's what it takes, to serve, to help, to be in the thing. He, uh, he knows the limits, and he'll say no if he can't do it, but he'll, or she will meet those needs. Misunderstood? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they appear a little bit pushy. They're a little pushy, yeah, they're trying to do things to help you to overcome a problem. Maybe God is dealing with you about something in your life. Maybe God is, uh, this just comes to mind. I, I don't know if this has ever happened or not, but just suppose I break down in my car. And, well, whatever happens to a car, it breaks down somehow or another. And this person comes along and says, here, I've got another car here, take mine. And they let me drive that other car. When maybe God was telling me, it's time for you to take a step of faith and get you another one. You don't need it now because you've got this other one to drive. See, sometimes that's misunderstood. They try to meet your needs when maybe God's trying to give you a lesson. So this gift of serving can be misunderstood. It really can. It can be misunderstood. Uh, because sometimes they jump in where God wants them to stay away. I love them. I do. I love them. I love all these people. I love them. We're going to pick it up right there uh, probably next Wednesday night here. A person with the gift of serving and a person with the gift of forth telling the word of God. They can be misunderstood. They can be misunderstood. And I trust that you will study on these things. Uh, the, the outline will be on the website. You'd like to have it. The outline that we've been using tonight will be on the website as soon as Dave can get it together and get it up there. And uh, so... Uh, Nothing else further tonight. We're going to have prayer and dismiss. But uh, remember Sunday morning, your church will be meeting. You be in your church. You be right there. You can pick up our service in the afternoon if you'd like to because it's archived on Facebook. It's archived on YouTube. It's archived on our website, webc.online. It's archived right there, and you can, you can pull it up and listen to it. We have people in California. We have people in Dallas, Texas. We have people all over Georgia. Tennessee, Chattanooga, all places like that. We have people listening. North Carolina, Darlene, listening right now over in North Carolina. And I happen to know some of these people, and we love them, and we're sending this message out to you. So until next week, Tom Moody from West End Baptist Church, may God bless you, is our prayer. Father, speak to every heart here tonight and help us in what we do to be the Christian you want us to be, to use our gifts, to use our talents, but our gifts as well, to be the blessing to somebody that somebody needs to have and to hear and to know. We'll give you all the praise for it all. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.